Mornings are for coffee and contemplation. See, it's, it's Halloween, so I'm dressed like Chief Hopper from Stranger Things. Eh? My wife Lauren dressed up as Joyce Byer, so it was better when we went to a party, because I could tell her, I'm gonna find your son. Uh, but she's not here, so... And my beard's too big. I hate Halloween. So the new MacBook Pros launched last week, complete with touch bars and extreme dongle compatibility. But something that flew under the radar was the fact that the new laptops feature AMD's Radeon Pro GPUs. AMD has now released the specs for the Radeon Pro 450, 455, and 460, which are available in the higher-end 15-inch MacBook Pros. The 450 has 640 stream processors and one teraflop of peak compute performance, while the 455 gets 768 stream processors and 1.3 teraflops of performance performance. The mobile version of the 460 gets 1.85 teraflops, a bit less than the 2.2 teraflops of its desktop counterpart. Suffice to say, these GPUs should help creators and engineers do their work, but I wouldn't plan on gaming too much. So will AMD launch a desktop version of the 450? They could, but at that point you might as well plug a potato into your system and save up a bit of extra cash for a 470 or GTX 1050. The potato wouldn't help, but it might make you feel better. And we've actually got some more news about the MacBook Pro, specifically how upgradable it is. Some enthusiasts were taken aback by the new laptops being limited to a max of 16 gigabytes of RAM. In response, Apple's senior vice president of marketing, Phil Schiller, explained that to put more than 16 gigabytes of fast RAM into a notebook would eat into the device's power efficiency, so they capped it there. Should probably tell that to Razer, who got 32 gigabytes into the Razer Blade Pro just fine. Now, what is upgradable in the MacBook Pro, thankfully, is the SSD. But it looks like Apple put the SSD in a proprietary module, so no more swapping in regular drives like the good old days. I remember back in my day, we swapped out drives like no tomorrow or something. EA is back in users' crappy books, or users from Myanmar anyways, as the company blocked the Southeast Asian country's access to the Origin game service temporarily. The block was an extremely late response to a U.S. trade embargo on Myanmar and other countries, including Cuba, Iran, and Syria, that went into place 19 years ago. Strangely, EA just started enforcing the embargo in September, just before the U.S. government ended its sanctions, after which access to Origin was still unavailable to users in Myanmar. EA reps responded to the issue in threads on Reddit and the Origin forum saying they're working on a fix. But really, what was EA thinking? Did they just not know about the embargo and happen to find out about it right before it was lifted? Ugh. How do you not have a thorough knowledge of all active North American economic sanctions? <laughs> Hello. It's time for I'm glad that soldier saw fit to scream quick bits with his dying breath as he flew across the map. Your service will be remembered, soldier. Thanks, Destiny Maker. He's got a gaming channel, actually, so check the link in the description for that and send in a clip of yourself saying quick bits to get featured. On Friday, two of Elon Musk's brainchilds, or brain children, Tesla and SolarCity teamed up to unveil solar tiles, which are roof tiles with integrated solar panels and a bigger and better version of the Powerwall, adequately named the Powerwall, Two. Some details on Intel's upcoming desktop KB Lake processors has leaked showing the flagship quad-core Core i7-7700K, that's a lot of sevens, with hyper-threading and a base clock of 4.2 gigahertz, along with its little brothers and sisters. One face-in is a new biometric password manager that combines facial and vocal recognition to unlock your phone because it's the future now. And after Tom's Hardware reported that some EVGA GTX 1080 and 1070 cards could potentially overheat due to inadequate VRM cooling, some owners of those cards are now reporting literal smoke, sparks, and high temperatures emanating from their graphics cards. EVGA responded and added added VRM thermal pads to the card's design. You can either send it to EVGA for repair, your card that is, or get your free thermal pad kit to apply to the card yourself. Sources for all of today's news stories can be found in the NCIX forum post linked in the description. So instead of putting something you guys wanted us to say, I just thought I'd thank everyone who tweeted me for my birthday. Thank you so much. I know Jack told you to, but it still warms my heart. Bless you. Today is your last day to get your comment in for Fans with Benefits. Tomorrow we are announcing the winners of this month's prize, which is an ASUS Maximus 8 Hero Motherboard. 
I thought it was on the table. Just a sec. Aha! There it is. So uh, that's not too shabby for a prize. All you gotta do is subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips and comment on any video from October to enter to win this. It's that easy. So, better do it. All right, that's it for Nailing Daily, guys. Thanks for watching. Click over here for previous videos. Check us out on Twitter on this side of the screen. But as always, like the video if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. And may you have a happy Halloween. Uh, hopefully dressing up with all of your friends and getting getting some candy. Right, guys? Right. I love Halloween. Love it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so have a happy Yeah, Halloween. boy! Yeah. He's, he's a B-boy Deadpool, so that's why he's... All attitude. I'm not really in character. Okay, we got a trick or treat, guys. Let's go. Trick or treat.